My name is Carl. My name is Oscar. And this is Who Would Watch This? Where we review bad films and decide who would watch this. Well, apart from us. Carl, what are we talking about today? Oscar, today we're talking about Holmes and Watson. It currently holds a 3.8 on IMDb, a 1.5 on Letterboxd, and a whopping 10% on Rotten Tomatoes. What's the plot? Uh, <laughs> a humorous take on Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's classic mystery featuring Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Oh, an immediately debatable synopsis. <laughs> 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 nope. <laughs> Uh, is that an IMDb review done by Anonymous or somebody? Uh, that's, I think, just the plot they've given. Oh, okay. All right. I love the ones that it's like somebody's written the oh, plot yeah. for IMDb. It's like nine paragraphs long. So long. This is just <laughs> but the there's some line. wrong facts. Like they've done it from memory. They're like, I saw this a few years ago. I'll type I'm it out. I'm pretty sure I know Inception. Let me go. This. I think it's a dream. I think it's all this stuff. It's fun. Oh, no. This is, this is going to be a tough one to talk about. It is going to be a tough one. One of many comedies that we have on this list. And this oh. is, is this the first... Comedy? Oh, oh, I forgot to say, it is, um, oh, it's on the IMD bottom 100. Mm. It's 97 on the bottom 100 of IMDb. Did it move up? Move down? No, I think it's on, maybe it's switched places with Pluto Nash coming up in two weeks. Very exciting. Shameless plug. But yeah, so we've got a lot of comedies to talk about. We do. And comedy is the hardest one to talk about because yeah. a drama trying to be serious is funny. Comedy trying to be funny that isn't funny how many times did you pause this? Oh, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, get, I put a 24-hour <laughs> yeah. pause in the middle because I was drained. <laughs> but again, <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, first 10 minutes, pure fucking joy. I disagree wholeheartedly. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so do you have a history of this? No, I like I like Sherlock. I like the TV show. Um, I attempted to read some of the books, so you know, a bit smart. Um, <laughs> In your attempt, <laughs> yeah, I opened a book. How uh, far did you get? I got to the Hounds. Got never to got to Baskerville. No, great keen for the Hounds. No mystery. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I've seen the show. I, I know I'm familiar with the character, but I'm not familiar with this particular movie. How about you? Yeah, I hadn't seen it before this is my first viewing of it mm-hmm. i remember wanting to see it in cinemas really and then what dissuade you it came and went in a flash yeah that's one thing about it i'll pretty much watch anything at the cinemas like i'll watch too much yeah and because i just enjoy going to the cinemas mm-hmm. and this was one of the ones that i was like i'll get around to this because i like will ferrell and i like john c Riley. yeah who doesn't love stepbrothers yeah has it captured the stepbrothers magic no (laughs) and i remember the ads for it for a while i remember it sort of ramping up ramping up and then just gone yeah the well i mean they wanted the tested so bad with audiences they were gonna try and sell this to netflix netflix did not want a bit which is (laughs) insane yeah (laughs) disgusting i don't think there's a lot on netflix i'm like oh awful but i get it we've done two netflix films already yeah and there's more to come <laughs> there's a <laughs> lot a more to come they've really captured that audience but i think i mean this show is called who would watch us and netflix knew that no one would <laughs> so we're gonna be a bit stumped for that question i love that the demographics like we're either gonna get absolute horseshit films mm. high profile television shows mm. And now we're just going to get Oscar-nominated movies. Oh, yeah. So that's the that's their wingspan. I do love that Irishman and, like... Marriage Story, yeah, Roma, <laughs> like, all of them. And then the, Mixed in together yeah. with, like... Kissing oh, Booth, oh, 365, yeah. like, getting it all. I like it's being filmed right next to... I like it's a big building and they're all filming, like, randomly next to each other. They're like, hey, Alfonso Caron, can you come over here and do a little bit of the Kissing Booth? And he just flips them off. <laughs> Go fuck your Oscar, you cunt. <laughs> he's holding all four of his and he's like kissing them on the head. There's your kissing booth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll make it. Um, alright, let's hop let's hop into let's this. Let's jump straight into this. Um, so it begins with uh how Watson and... Whoa, 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 we've not got the one joke I thought was kind of funny, Carl. It opens with a cold opening, which is a sort of pretentious quote. And then says it's Hannah Montana, season two, episode four. That got you did it? I I was I was like, hey, all right, <laughs> all right, let's give us a go. And then it immediately took a turn. But I that, love if that's your enjoyment of comedy. Just go, oi, <laughs> oi, I'll take that. <laughs> just all the movies that you found like hysterical. You're just like, oi, <laughs> oi, funny, <laughs> oi, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Heckling the TV, <laughs> oi. <laughs> 
God, that guy at the fucking back of the cinema <laughs> just doesn't know how to laugh. Just keeps screaming at the screen. Angrily. <laughs> Go away. Oh. Yeah, so sorry, that happens. I and mean, then it opens with... Yeah, it opens with like a... It's it's one of those like weird movies where they're like, there's a narrator at the beginning and then never again. <laughs> I love those movies where they forget they have they a narrator. Like, oh, jeez. It was really handy to start. <laughs> no, we don't need it. Um, so we... <laughs> so we meet how... God, there's not a lot to talk about. There's, we meet how um, Watson meets Holmes. Yes. Which is, of course, unlike uh, anything to do material. with the actual source material. Yeah. Uh, he goes to kill himself because he's uh, hurt by the war. Yeah. He goes to jump off. And this is... I, th- I thought this was okay. I was... I, I did laugh at you beautiful green succulent bitch <laughs> and him stroking and kissing a giant vegetable. Yes, yeah, so you joke you know what it's going to be. Like, there's a big like, <laughs> vegetable <laughs> and a man on top of a ledge. Yeah, like, oh, oh, don't jump on it. <laughs> What's going to happen? <laughs> um, yeah, as, a, as an example of comedy, it's some of the laziest throughout. Oh, yeah. But I didn't... In terms of this just being like, what, you want me to live? And him going, no, <laughs> jump somewhere else. Yeah, that was all right. But... It's, like, I think it, they start their strongest and whittle away oh, yeah. very quickly. You messaged me midway through this because I'd seen it before you. 11 minutes in. Yeah, 11 minutes in. You're like, this isn't too bad. And I'd finished it and gone, shut the fuck. How dare yeah. you? Don't. Think... <laughs> and then 20 minutes later, I yeah. think I said I'm stopping it. <laughs> I stopped it at the 20 minute mark. I went, oh, okay. This, 20, this 48 hour rental is really going to push the limits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I'll say from the beginning. Off yep. the bat. Off the bat. I do think Will Ferrell and John C. Riley are trying. I think they are. I think they are. Yeah. I think their accents are fun. I, I just, I think that's why the, I think the accents might be why a lot of American audiences didn't give this like, why it's considered one of the worst one because it's like quite like very very low compared to like how you were saying the house which is a uh... oh yeah so this is not as bad as I was like there's some awful Will Ferrell films out yeah. there I think this is pretty much towards the bottom yeah but there's worse. Mm. There are worse. I think the accents are why. It... Looking at you, Land of the Lost. <laughs> oh, I rewatched that recently. How's that hold up for you? Uh, the guys in Lonely Island, the monkey. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. And Ch- Chimbi Chucker. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Right. Why is that in my memory? <laughs> what are you doing? What have you replaced your brain? That's <laughs> that was um really painful. That was. It's oh, it's it's terrible. Dead. I remember not liking it as a kid and rewatching it like. With like a twenty twenty. There's a lot of money spent on it too. It looks it. Look, yeah. The sets are quite impressive. There's another one where I was like, all oh, the costuming and sets are nice in this. Yeah, but it's it's spent yeah. the money on it. Yeah, so wait, I mean, we're going like the budget was only forty million. Yeah, but for a comedy, pretty pricey. You think? Quite well, pricey? I mean, uh, I watched King of Staten Island recently, yeah. and I don't think that's a very pricey movie. It's okay. like a two hour ten comedy drama. So I kind of assume comedy like it's like a period piece and it's forty million. Yeah, it's quite cheap. Yeah, no, but I mean, like in terms of, I guess they well, I would think Will Ferrell and John C. Riley getting yeah. higher paychecks. Yeah. So say ten million goes to them, yeah. they're left with thirty million, and then you've also got other like hard hitters of like Hugh, Hugh Laurie and Steve Coogan Ralph and Ralph Fiennes, Fiennes yeah. Rebecca Hall, um, Brave. <laughs> <laughs> you mean. Lauren Lapicus. I'll from... repeat, brave. <laughs> I know she's famous for a lot of other things, and I love her in Boardwalk Empire, but to me, she'll always be brave. brave. <laughs> it's really exciting when at the end of the film you find out brave is the killer. Um, oh. But I mean, like, I don't know what your return is on a like a comedy that you're spending $40 million it made, on. It made bang on its budget, so it probably lost money in marketing. But uh... Wait, so th- it's still... Oh yeah, I f- totally forgot to look at the box office. What did it make? $40 million. It made $40 million. It For costs. a movie that, like, came and went like that. Yeah. So I guess, really, like, Will Ferrell and John C. Riley do hold clap. I think so. I think the Step Brothers, like, so many people, let's say that's their favourite movie. Yeah. Like, comedy of, like, the last, like, ten years. Like, I was convinced, because I, I feel like Will Ferrell's been on autopilot for a while. Yeah. And then I thought he stepped up his game. I enjoyed bits of, and then as a whole, kind of, Eurovision. Yeah. Like, I think Eurovision's fun and, I like, celebrates he, and that fun enough. And he he's, said himself that, like, he loves the competition. Yeah. So I so think yeah. he was retrying. Really Passion's there for him yeah. because he, like, wrote that, too. Yeah. So. Did he write that, did he? Yeah. Oh, wow. So, clearly there's, like... And I don't think that's, like, a great comedy. Yeah. 
But it's really fun, neat, like, fun and enjoyable. If you like and Eurovision, I yeah. think it's a really nice tribute to them. Totally. Yeah, yeah, I think so. They don't really mock it either. They're sort of no. quite embraced it. Also, I think the song at the end's a fucking banger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about it. <laughs> Where are we Who's up? the big <laughs> Lascar I know the song. <laughs> Let You're me sing it. You're trying to distract from this movie <laughs> that you don't want to talk about. Um, oh god, I don't. Anyway, I do think the bo- I do think both of them are trying. I bet they are, but I just don't think it, it doesn't work obviously oh, but yeah no, but they are i think in the deleted scenes there's some quite funny bits but like yeah. i think and we were also i think we'll also touch on the fact that this was an r-rated film edited down to pg-13 yeah so i don't know what like i always think how much they had to cut out there's a lot of clear dubbing i don't know if you noticed that yeah i did yeah so that must have been where they were like there's an f word here speak over it yeah <laughs> And I always think, like, a 90-minute movie, I'm like, they've cut this down to, like, what they can. It's technically a film. Yeah. Wild. This is so poorly edited. Yeah. Like... I just, like, it's broken. <laughs> yeah, it is. It re- like, it really is. It jumps around so... Sporadically. Just like, all over the place. Yeah, there's no terms of, like, oh, there's such little plot. Like, I don't know. I've just got bits that I'm like, I think the sets are nice. There's a really long hat gag. <laughs> oh, God, the hat gag. They do like a... They have like a Make England Great Again fez. That just like really sums up like the reference. It's just like a lot of this like movie is just like, hey, this is now. Yeah. Here's the joke in oldie times. Well, I think there's... I think there's some stuff that I think really... I don't want to say works, but there's stuff where I think this really could have worked. Okay, I yeah. think I see a lot of potential in terms of the fact... I, I do like the fact that they keep poking fun of the times. Yeah. In terms of, like, there's not women doctors. Oh, that that bit as a, like, as a whole? Oh, no, I don't mean it's, like, funny, but I mean, like, you could do a thing you in could. terms of, yes. like... I think that, touching on it, I like... There was a part where she's like, I don't think it's funny, but I think some of my patients live as long as, like, a week. And she's just electrotherapying everybody. Yeah. But she's just got horrible... Like, they're just talking about how horrible doctors are. Yeah. Like, there's a part where they're in a gym. And then a, there's a penny further, oh, furthering I, I, bicycles yeah, and I exercise was, bike. I, I was quite happy with that. Yeah, like, there's stuff where I'm like, I think there could have been... He, go, he goes like, hey, I'm a doctor. Would you like some cocaine? He does that joke like three times. Yeah, like, those were the ones where I was like... The one where it was like, do you want some heroin? Yeah. <laughs> like... First time, oh, I saw the trailer before this one. That's kind of funny. Mm. But then they did it three times, so it was kind of like, you know. It's very broad comedy. I'm surprised that they did it, because I don't think it's super on brand for either of them. No. Because like, in super- terms of where Step Brothers and, like, Telegator Knights are. Yeah. Like, really night and day in terms of, like, comedy and plot and things like that. Mm. So, I don't know if it's Adam McKay that's able to really hold the two of them together. I think so, it must be. Because he's sort of done this Get Hard. He's been a... Well, Ethan Cohen, not Ethan Cohen of the Cohen Brothers, has written some of, like, my favourite comedies. Like, he's written Tropic Thunder. Yeah. And Idiocracy, which I... Yeah, Idiocracy is great. I think Idiocracy is a very underrated comedy. Oh, yeah. It should have higher pop culture impact. <laughs> it really should. It's fantastic. And yeah. I think it's still relevant, like, today. Mm. So, when, like... Do you hear that? We're calling you dumb. Yeah. We're calling you all fucking dumb. We're recording a podcast, so, you know... <laughs> if you're listening to this, you're fucking house. dumb. I don't care. Shout out to our listeners. You're dumb. <laughs> That's how they build please, a podcast. Please, <laughs> please, <laughs> please come back. <laughs> please don't leave we us. We have so few of you. <laughs> We're going to look like fools when we have 50 million. And it's like, look at these old episodes. Imagine They're making so 50 million from our <laughs> shitty little <laughs> movie podcast. Joe Rogan's like, how do they do yeah. it? Yeah, how are they able to do what we are? <laughs> we got like Robbie Downey Jr. to sit in our kitchen. <laughs> we forget he's a guest. <laughs> oh, fuck. We uh, don't give him a microphone. <laughs> anyway, what do you think of Doolittle? Um, that's the hour. <laughs> Ooh, do we do Doolittle next week? We do. Ooh, I think it's on the list though. It's not. Is it not on the No, it's video? sitting around a five. Doolittle's a fucking, we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Guys, in real time as a listener, this is a real treat for you. You got a little peek behind the curtain. How much effort we put in. Should we do Doolittle? Sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Tick. And that'll be in two weeks time. <laughs> it's funny because we like agreed on it so quickly, but we did spend 10 minutes before the podcast oh, trying yeah. to find a film. <laughs> Something else. Just so you guys know the format, we're doing one from the IMDb beat imdb's bottom list and one that we are choosing so yep. alternating because uh, some of them i'm like i need a break <laughs> i do need a break there's a lot of just like 
No. So after this, I need a need a detox. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I don't know, do little that detox, but <laughs> I'll watch my own detox in between. <laughs> oh god, there's not really much to say about this film because each joke. Ugh. So they, what's what's the plot? So Holmes and Watson are. Here's here's what I'm going. Let's literally just. I'm going to literally say the whole plot. All right, cool. Let's see if I can do it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, so Holmes and Watson become friends. In a montage, we see them do a lot of like activities and mm-hmm. success together. They find Moriarty. Turns out it's not Moriarty. It's actually a doppelganger. Moriarty's skipped to America. Mm-hmm. Some people start to try and kill people around England. It leads them to go to a handful of places. Rebecca Ferguson, uh, sorry, Rebecca Hall shows up for no r- real reason. Holmes thinks that the killer is Watson. Watson immediately near next scene decides it's not him sings a song to realize that yep song far too long Mm -hmm. freeze him turns out it was miss hudson yeah is the killer a twist i didn't see coming don't give that credit (laughs) because the bad because at the moment miss hudson had been the joke of her was she's fucking famous people and i have pages upon pages of famous people facts that we can go into oh do we go into them now or shall we wait we'll wait because i can just there's so many problems with the dates. <laughs> There's just so many issues. Anyway, yeah. So she's the killer. She's which... the killer. She goes to try and blow up the Titanic. They don't succeed. She accidentally blows up herself. Billy Zane. Billy Zane. <laughs> Billy Zane. It well, ends. Yeah. Um, so another compliment I'll give it. I think Ralph Fiennes is doing well too. He's in like two minutes. Yeah. And like... The moment that they catch him though. And I was like, <laughs> real acting. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, I mean, on a comedic level, they're tr- all trying. Yeah. But he's on the ground forming tears. Quivering. Quivering. Like, Don't like, hurt me. <laughs> doing real acting. Yeah. And I went, oh, <laughs> Goodness. who would have thought it's in here? <sighs> Did you get into a blind rage and tear your notes and tape them back together? Uh, no, I ripped them up because I thought this was the bad notes. And then I was like, oh, I rewrote them because I was just kind of like, I looked back at my notes and it was just like, bug scene. Window scene. <laughs> This scene, I was like, let's, let's expand. But then I... It's it's much more of a genuine, like, scary movie or epic movie spoof film than I thought yeah. it was going to be. There's another thing that I don't really like what they did with it, but I feel like there's potential in it. And it's when they were making fun of, like, the Robert Downey Jr. calculating. Yeah, the Guy Ritchie sort of yeah. um, slow-mo sort of, like, him yeah. analyzing. They do it four times. Probably too many. Yeah. I didn't... There's the... I liked the one that Watson did where he was like I just don't fucking get it yeah, <laughs> which is funny and there was the peeing one <laughs> where he's like too drunk and trying to work it out yeah I think if this film came out when those films were out because I, I looked it up this film was like in production hell for like since 2005 originally Will Ferrell and um uh I've lost the name Borat. What's oh Sasha Baron Cohen was meant to be tied to it ah I wonder which... who was, who would have been who they both seem homesy yeah I couldn't really... I guess... I guess Sasha Baron Cohen... I prefer him as... I think he'd be a better uh, Sherlock. Mm. Remember when Sasha Baron Cohen was supposed to be Freddie Mercury? Ah, oh, it's just a lot of upsets. He would yeah, have been fantastic. he would have been a great Freddie Mercury. Yeah. I think more dirtier. I think they would have... Well, that's why he walked away, right? As it was... I think... No, I think um, the studio didn't because they were like... The, the band was like, well, this is our music, so you're going to do us included. Yeah, no, he was he was like, oh, we're doing a Freddie Mercury thing, right? And they're like, no, it's a Queen thing. And he's like, why? We only really care <laughs> we about don't Freddie. don't care about these three guys. <laughs> like, if you want an insight into Freddie Mercury's life, watch The Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> that's the level of fame. And he used to throw, he used to throw midgets. That's what that's based on. Yeah. So, <laughs> and they were like... <laughs> AIDS. <laughs> I don't know. That's my critique of that. Not a huge fan of uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. I think maybe. Oh, people actually ask. I'm very. Oh, angry. people are huge fans of it. Yeah. It was really fun. I was listening to Roger Deakins' podcast. Oh yeah. Um, and I have like the editor of like Widows and Blade Runner and the mm. Denis Villeneuve films because they're both working on Dune together. Cool. Um, and the editor was like, "Yeah, I won't name the film, but I saw one with terrible editing, mm. and then just immediately alluded to it being Bohemian Rhapsody because no, it won the Oscar for the editing. Yeah, and it got like. Well, I think it deserves it in terms of the recreation the editing of the Live Aid yeah. bit. Other the editing, an hour and fifty. It minutes. is. It is mean though to go, this movie's shit, and then isolate its shittest moment. 
I know, like in terms of like, I think so. But but here's the thing. Oh, that's think, a terrible I, scene. I think the, it's, the I table think it's, scene we're talking about. The yeah, listener at home is a table scene where people it's cutting around a ton. Yeah. Like I don't know if that was contractually the band members had to be on screen so much. I don't know. I don't know something like that. Yeah. But it's I think it's bad. But I don't think it's unfair to like bring that up when then it wins the Oscar for like, yeah. Like hey, this is the best of the year. You kind of go, but you got this big. <laughs> it's not like just that scene. And it's like. The yeah, yeah, pretty... that's right. but it ends. It's the hard thing. Like when a movie ends on a high, it's hard for you to be like, what you don't think of about no. the rest. How you weren't enjoying half of it. Definitely. I don't know. It's like I have a friend that works in publishing, mm. and he was talking about because when he like has to read through the manuscripts and things like that, mm. and then he'll like read a review, and if he's been marketing like a book for a while and it gets a bad review, mm. they always like pull out a sentence, and they're like, "What a horrible fucking sentence this is," and he's like. Yeah, you picked the worst sentence out of tens of thousands of words <laughs> that were written on the page. There's other great sentences. Mm. You just picked the worst. Like, the books, 250, 300 pages. A movie's uh, two hours. So if you get like one minute, it's kind of like uh, 1% of the film. A book. <laughs> <laughs> a book. Oh, God. It's like minuscule. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> We're getting off the beaten track. We're getting off the beaten track because we don't want to talk about this. No. Let's just go through... So we've said the plot. We've basically said the plot. Yeah. Uh, have there were any other gags that you liked? Uh, the bicycle scene was funny. Yep. I thought the Hammond's hand, I think, caught me off guard. Will Ferrell says to the kids, Come on, grimy children. <laughs> <laughs> There are a couple of like little lines that That's made me thing. smile. I think like in a ninety minute film there's like little smile moments. I ninety percent of the jokes I don't think. Like were. here's here's what I thought would have probably actually been worth doing. Is I don't know why they didn't because they because Arthur Conan Doyle's listed as a writer because it's it's based on his yeah, work. Yeah. I don't know why you wouldn't genuinely do a comedic adaptation of one of his actual novels. Mm. So then the issue with this, for me, is the fact that it's so boring <laughs> I think in the, the middle. <laughs> yeah, I think the plots... Because it's just non-existent. They just no. jump around. For, they get drunk in one scene and they're off to do another yeah. thing. Like There's two clo- There's There's a murder. There's a tattoo. Yeah. So then they figure out who it is and then they just figure out... Yeah. And then just Holmes is like, hey, it's, it's our housekeeper. Because I think there's a handful of things where they've clearly looked at the material and they've gone, isn't it funny how shitty he is to Watson all the time? Yeah. Isn't it funny how shitty both of them are to Mrs. Hudson all the time? Yeah. Like, there's a handful of things where they've clearly looked at it and gone, oh, he's such an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> and he is an asshole, but they don't play that up. He yeah. just is an asshole in this movie. Mm. And it's just like, well... Until he's just not... No, mate. He's like, I'm I'm not a bad prick anymore. Yeah. But yes. yeah, I don't know why they wouldn't just do... Like, if you were to sit down and literally do an adaptation of Hound of the Baskervilles mm. and then make fun of that... Yeah. Would, I think, be a lot more fun because there's really nothing tying this together apart from very elongated gags. There is a gag where they're sending a text using... Oh, so they've, they've drunk in the pub and they're sending, like, a drunk telegram. Mm. And it's like... I think I can go through each gag, which, like, there's, like, four gags go for five minutes and mm. that's most of the film. That one you're talking about. Yeah. And it's just them, like, just playing around with it, I'm sure. But it's... It's but I, like, I don't hate the idea of that gag. The gag is no. just not funny. So then when it's five minutes long, it's... Painful. Really painful. There's another one where the bugs are... Like, the bees have gone out because they're trying yeah. to kill a mosquito. There's one where they're just hitting the queen a lot. Oh, with the awful puppet? Mm. It's really very lazy. I'm really shocked by it. Because yeah. it's so... I don't know. I just like... It doesn't feel like they had like a script. No, it doesn't. It feels like it was... A very, very improv film, except none of what was orchestrated was good enough for their improv. Yeah. Like, if we look at Adam McKay comedies that Will Ferrell's been in, mm. he sets up a good scenario for them to then have... Play around like, with it. Yeah. Have... But I think because it's they had to already act as Sherlock Holmes, they couldn't really get into the character. Like, it's very hard material to make funny, I think. Yeah, like agree? I think their I think their thing was like it'll be funny because we got funny people. Yeah, I think th- that that's it. Because like the such... sale point is that it's Holmes and Watson as played by two comedians. Yeah, so it's such a shame as well because there's so many like like amazing English like comedians in there. They've got like Rob Brydon. Have yeah, you? yeah, and they've got um <laughs> big fan of Would I Lie to You? Oh, big fan. Yeah, Love that. I'm happy I saw him. I went, oh, damn, you're in this. Yeah, <laughs> he always then... pops up in things. 
He is. He must have been like, what a get for me. Because he's never usually in the like American material. No. And I was like, oh, go you. I mean, he's a paycheck. Go yeah. him. I and forget he's in Gavin and Stacey. He is. He's fantastic in that, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, um, he is. Steve Coogan was in this. Um, yeah. well, who did you like the most out of all the cameos? Would you count Ralph Fiennes? I don't know. I sort of yeah. like, yeah. Oh, actually, no, sorry. One of the Grammy kids was one of the girls from Game of Thrones. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was the one that got, um, was like the queen, like Jon Snow's pal on the other side of the ta- town. <laughs> Is that what they said back in the day? Yeah, that's how they <laughs> Go see my pal! <laughs> back in the town! Back in the town! <laughs> um, the My favourite cameo comes at the end of the movie. Honey Boy's in it. I was like, Honey Boy! <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that's the one that gives the letter to to Ralph Fiennes. Really? Is Noah Duke from... Yeah, from Honey Boy. Yeah, Honey Boy, Quiet Place, Wanda, wow. Ford vs. Ferrari. My favourite emerging young actor of the times. <laughs> I was excited! Look, I wrote... That was my ending thing. Right under Billy Zane. Honey Boy. <laughs> hey, nice. <laughs> Honey Boy. It, on a, it made the movie end on a high for me. Five stars. Give it the Oscar for Edling. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I've also written the... They play off... Uh, who's Millie? She's also like a comedian. She's been around for a little while. The one that the one that Sherlock's interested the one that, in. Uh, I've written Lauren Lapicus. Yes, yes, that's it, Lauren Lapicus. So they play a gag about her being like having a feeble mind, or yeah, mentally, Ill. and she's going to die, yeah, or something like that. Twist is she's not. Didn't see that coming either. So the ending was just a lot of twists. It's a lot me. of twists. Do they work? No, no. But it took me off guard. Yes. <laughs> Which is Does that make a good film? I don't know. No, <laughs> is don't this think... movie the Prestige? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it's Prestige. <laughs> It's just... Have you seen the Prestige? Prestige? I have, yeah. Oh, okay. ruined it for me. <laughs> it's, it's set in the same time period. Can you imagine Christian Bale's walking around and just Holmes and Watson's happening in the well, background? Well, let's go into the time period because I spent a good hour looking up all the <laughs> inaccuracies. When do you want to set this time period? When would you say this time period So it's the 1800s, right, is supposed, supposed to be? Or, uh, is it, or is it the 1900s? It's, well, I mean, when do you... Because Queen Elizabeth... Yeah. Sorry, it or the Titanic. Because Queen Elizabeth died in 1901. Yeah. Titanic was set sail in 1912. Yeah. So you decide where you want to pick, because the movie didn't decide. <laughs> <laughs> because either one... She didn't die because they saved her. No, she she died before the Titanic. No, no. Oh, sorry. This rewrote history. She didn't oh, die because this... they saved her. Because well, notoriously, the Queen's death is famous for... Because she blows up on the Titanic. She does. So this film rewrites. Mm. It's kind of like Inglorious Bastards. It's quite... Do you reckon that... T- oh, no, it's probably not. But I mean, like... I just kept on being... Like, the budget kept upping. Mm. In terms of... I was like, well, this is fine. And then there was, like, a musical number. And I'm like, that's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was a shot of the Titanic. And I went, that's expensive. Mm. And then there was an explosion. And I went, stop throwing money at this. Where's all this money coming from? Stop throwing money. It feels like a... Like a- like a money laundering scheme it doesn't really feel like it feels very cheap and sort of made I'm not really sure mm. where this money's gone so we had Adam McKay as a producer on this one how involved he was probably not <laughs> no I guess it was like it's probably off filming Vice <laughs> oh god yeah just sort of uh, do you think it's just a mo- do you think they're just wanting to make money with this one do you think they saw the script and was like I think it was made a quick buck yeah I don't know what the inner goings of a studio are when it comes to this sort of material mm. I don't know what pushes them to go forward with it and make yeah. it I guess once you commit, once you get Will Ferrell and John C. Riley, like it's gonna make some money. Yeah. Like Step Brothers, like alone, I'm sure it made. I'm sure more people coming back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Step Brothers not as successful as I thought it was, and it has become like very successful over time. What did it originally make? Was like it... just over a hundred million, I think, on like a similar budget. Fair so enough. not 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 huge. like massive, for, like sort of double. Like, this clearly, has good like sales. Yeah. Um, did you want to talk about some other Will Ferrell films? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, what's your? We'll, we'll go for. I've sort of written down quite a few. I've definitely. What would you describe as a Will Ferrell movie? Because I've got hit once he's in. Yeah. So then... I think the quintessential and my favorite one mm. is Anchorman. Yep. I think that's very rep- like a great representation of his comedy. Mm-hmm. But also, I think Anchorman has like a lot going for it in terms of talking about discrimination in the workplace, the emergence of the news. Mm. Things like that. Like, it's because it's Adam McKay, I think it also has something to say mm. on top of the comedy. Definitely. Which I think is why that one works. Do you um, like Anchorman 2? I don't like it as much. I think that one's too long. Yeah. There's a lot you can cut. But I also think it has some clever stuff about the popularization of news mm-hmm. and them, like, doing 
the car chases and just reviewing like when they're like we're just going to do good stuff and that like pre- <laughs> they're like yeah. puppy things and good in sports and like I think there's good stuff in it. I don't think yeah. it's as successful as the first. I'm always surprised at how uh, like old Anchorman is. I always assumed it was like 2010. It's like 2004 mm. comedy. It a, feels very modern. Yeah, which is I think a testament to good yeah. filmmaking. Probably. What is, what is that? What's your favorite Anchorman? What's your favorite Will Ferrell film? Um, I mean. Uh, I mean, like, Lego movie, but he's not really, like, you yeah. wouldn't recount that. He is in it. He is Properly in it. in it. Yeah. <laughs> I would call... But then would you count Megamind? <laughs> Megamind's great. I think that's... But also, I think that is very much his... I, I know he I probably th- hasn't got much to do with it, but it is his style of comedy. Well, I think definitely. And I was thinking about this, because he's like maybe a super villain genius. Mm. And he plays it fantastic. Whereas in this, he's kind of a similar character. I just don't think he works, because he's, like... A genius, but then he's also like an idiot. It's a shame Megamind never connected. Like it wasn't very popular, and it never got a sequel, sort of thing. No, I think it. I think it's gained a lot of traction in the past. Yeah, well, it really came out before superhero stuff really took off. Yeah, in terms of the Marvel universe, there's like a handful of things where I'm like, well, had you come out? Yeah, it's 2007, I think, Megamind as well. Yeah, so it's like 2008 Iron Man. Yeah. So it's like if you wanted to really capitalize on it, you'd want to come out, I think, just after Avengers in Definitely. like 2012. There's a handful of things. I think like Unbreakable's getting like a new resurgence because of people looking for like different shades yeah. of superhero stuff. It's why like Logan, I think, did really... And ones that are like... A bit like where like it's they they choose to make like superhero a subgenre of like a western yes. or like a horror or something like that you know definitely yeah now the people are playing around with it like there was what? one on Netflix recently that wasn't great Project Power which was like you get it's like a new drug has hit the town and then you have the pill and then you've got five minutes of having a superpower oh cool and then so people are getting addicted to that nobody knows what their superpower is so it could actually be really good or really bad. Cool, so, sort of like a... Um, I always think Misfits. I'm always such mm, a shame. Yes, mid- like yeah, Misfits is good. I wish Misfits... Because it's... The, what's the Umbrella? The Umbrella Academy's mm. pretty much very yeah. similar to that. I'm pretty sure the writer pretty much like, yep, yeah, it's Misfits. Yeah. <laughs> That's always a one I wish finished and <laughs> mm. was good. <laughs> like, at, by the third season. But yeah, that's it's just a bit before the superpower. Yeah. Superhero sort of stuff beforehand. Yeah. So, you've... What about live um, action? Uh, I really like Zoolander. I think it's... a bit dated um i'm a big zoolander fan i do really like zoolander what else i've written i had the other guys i really like i thought that i i that's some of one of those ones i'm like it's a bit silly but it actually is quite it's quite good it's another adam mckay one which actually has a lot of the big short in it yeah the ending credits are literally trying to explain to you (laughs) like clearly adam mckay's really into like numbers (laughs) yes And just dumbing it down for people to understand how yeah. they're being scammed in terms of like pyramid schemes and things like mm. that. So I don't know I'm a big fan of the other guys. This is one of my all time favorite gags, which is just the Rock and Samuel, Samuel Jackson, Jackson jumping from that ledge. An amazing gag with there goes my hero <laughs> playing, and then just and then just cuts. They died. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, the new ones. Uh, Talladega Nights. Never seen that. Yeah. Uh, I'm ashamed. I wish I sort of saw it before this because it seems like Step Brothers is like the holy grail. Mm. Like, and this seems like a sort of like a. So I think Step Brothers might be funny. I think Talia and I it like has a better plot. Okay. Because that one actually has a lot more going on and also kind of has a bit of a commentary about Middle America. Yeah. Um, and racing and stuff like that. The racing sequence is excellent. That's like a nearly hundred million dollar film, I think. Really? Or something ridiculous. We're having Ford versus Ferrari, but then Will Ferrell. And... <laughs> oh, kind of. Yeah. Like the honestly, watch it. Like it's very and Amy Adams is terrific in it. Nice. Um, I've got Elf, which I love. I like Elf. Oh, yeah, Christmas. Yeah. Um, uh, Blades of Glory. What do you? What do you? <laughs> kind of comes down the middle. Yeah, I feel like it's a guilty pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> the hairbrush floating on the water <laughs> kind of gets me. I do love the chase sequence with Will Arnett on their skates, and they're like <laughs> stuck on the escalator, and they're like comp- they're in a chase, and it's like they do a move, and he's like, "Oh, magnificent!" <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. So this stuff, you know, what? I'm moving into the good side. Yep. <laughs> Change my yeah. mind and recollection. Well, then, where are we putting? So, so old school is another one I really like. Oh, old school. Yeah, by by Todd Phillips. I've never seen that one. Really, with like Vin- Vince Vaughn and Luke Wilson. No, never. And Will Ferrell, and they're like, they own a sorority house, and they have to like compete I've to seen keep. Post but I've never seen it. I thought I'm it was a big fan of old school. Really, watched it recently. I mean, it wasn't as good as I remember it being, but it was still funny. It's yeah. funny, like it's. 
you know, t- early Todd Phillips. Yeah. So the comedy's kind of hitting. It's <laughs> kind of hitting. Is it before, um, what's it called? Uh, yeah, Starsky just... and Hutch? Yeah. So that sort of, like, sort of, that sort of blend. Mm. It's where he's done Joker. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> feels so, like, that's his, like, before that, it was just those kind of comedies. Yeah, it is. War Dogs is quite good. I'm keen to see, I was really keen to see War Dogs, but it kind of disappeared, and I was like, yeah, I guess it's not as good. Yeah, but. it's like one of those ones where you're like, oh, like, it's good. Like, I'm always like, it always sucks when you watch a good movie, mm. and you're like, I get why they made it, because it was good, but also don't get why they made it, because I don't think it has any appeal. Yeah. <laughs> so. Someone might like it. Yeah. No. Um, some really bad ones of Will yeah. Ferrell. Zoolander 2. Oh, that's, saw in the cinema, that's like, just offensive. That was pretty... The, the cameos were the most painful part of that, I think. Mm. Like, I remember Katy Perry's in it for a minute. I just feel bad for everyone that's signed <laughs> on. Because there's so many people in that. Yeah. And I'm just... It, it's just not wanted or needed. I do feel like the... I'm a very in with the... Like, I think my preference is the Will Ferrell crowd. So I think it, like... I just have a softer spot for his... Yeah, I was sort of, like, looking for... I've seen a lot of his films, but I don't think, like... And I don't think, like, I think Zoolander's probably top for me. Uh, I will say this, though. I think his bit um, he does with Ryan Gosling, the knife guys. Have you seen that on YouTube? No. It's probably one of the funniest, like, Jimmy Kimmel bits. Okay, I'll have to watch that. I do love, um, I do love, uh, what's the one with, like, Will Ferrell's daughter? And she wants the money, like, the landlord. Oh, what is good. And she's like two years old. She's like, give me my fucking money, bitch. <laughs> and he's like, I swear to God, I'll have it next time. And she's like, and he's like, go home, you're drunk. <laughs> and she's like, I want mommy. And he's like, oh, you're a mess. <laughs> have you seen that? It's, a fu- it's like one of the first funny or die skits. No, I don't think I have. Okay. I don't know. I'm a, I like that skit. Yeah. <laughs> now we just get into skits. I think yeah. uh, Kicking and Screaming is also pretty poor. Oh yeah, that is painful. I've seen that one. Um, Land of the Lost, we already touched on, is really bad. And I think the house is genuinely the worst thing he's done. I hate the so house. So you'd put this second last? or you put? This... I would probably watch this again over Land of the Lost, the house, and maybe Kicking and Screaming. It's probably okay. in line with Kicking and Screaming for me. So why do you think it's so lowly rated? Do you think just people just dogpiled onto it? Yeah, I think there's a lot you can dogpile onto it. Like, mm. I don't think anyone cares enough about the house and Kicking and Screaming and Land of the Lost. Mm. But I think Holmes and Watson's like, I guess people are expecting. But it's a, like it's a it's an IP. Yeah. Like people That's know the of thing. it. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, people were like, oh, I've heard of that. Where's the house? You kind of go, I'd never heard of it. Why would it be yeah. good? <laughs> also, it's like I feel like there's always a good hook to some of his movies. The house is, has a fun hook. It's just mm. not good. Which is like they just decide to open a casino in their basement and mm. it gets really out of hand. Which sounds like a yeah, good it should pitch. be should should be fun. Yeah, it's not um, drama roles. Stranger than fiction's terrific. It's one of my favorites. I've not seen that one. How was the remake of the Avalanche movie? Have you seen that one? No, I didn't see it. But Force Majeure is terrific. I, yeah. uh, everybody should watch that. And then they've made the remake and oh, downhill. It's, it's a shame because um, Craig... I've heard if you have, I feel if you haven't seen Force Majeure, yeah, I think it's really fine. It's such low I know, one of my up. friends liked it, okay. and he's usually a bit of a snob, but he hadn't seen Force Majeure, so I don't know. I don't know if it was like off kilter or not as funny as people thought it was going to be. Mm. I don't know, maybe I'll check it out. I'm interested. Like Julia Louise Dreyfus, she's, I love her, she's yeah. good. Um, Everything Must Go. Have you seen that one? That's no. drama. Those are his two dramas: Stranger Than Fiction and Everything Must Go. And how is it compared? I've never heard of these films actually. Oh, Stranger Than Fiction's terrific. It's like a, a Stranger Than Fiction's very Kaufman-y. Like, not really? Kaufman, but it's Kaufman-y. Yeah. It's about a guy that realizes his life is, um... It's like one day he wakes up and there's a narrator. Cool. And it's like Emma Thompson and he realizes he's the main character in her new book. Yeah. And it's just him... Trying to deal with that? Yeah, trying to deal with it like that. All right. And that's strong. Um, and then, yeah, Everything Must Go is like he breaks up his, his wife and all of this stuff is thrown out onto the front of his, like, house... And he's oh, told he, he has to vacate in a certain amount of time. And so he's like, if it's a garage sale, it's legal, legal for him to stay. Yeah. So he's, I've seen the trailer for yeah. that. I thought it was a comedy. So it's a like, dram- more dramatic role. Yeah, so. it's like an indie dramatic role. Okay. Still bits of comedy, but yeah. it has a sad twist to... <laughs> very crushing. Anyway, those are Will Ferrell films. <laughs> <laughs> Will Ferrell films. Like, again, I don't know. I just... 
like there's not like a lot to talk about. Let's do John C. Riley films. I wrote them down. Oh, you wrote them down. I didn't write them down. Quite okay, yet. so I'm a. I was like, God, huge fan of the dude. Uh, he's in the Sisters Brothers recently with Walking Phoenix, which is quite good and based on a really good book. If anyone wants a good book to read, mm-hmm. um, he's in Kong Skull Island, a movie I don't love, but he's fine in it. He's in The Lobster, a movie I love that he's really good in. He's in Carnage, which is by Roman Polanski. Can't talk about him anymore, but that's a good play. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that. Can't talk about it. Don't see the movie, but I'm in it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we need to talk about Kevin, one of my all-time favorite films that mm-hmm. he is in with Tilda Swinton. That's a very high recommend. Go watch that. I'll watch it right now. Yeah, everybody watch that. Have you seen it? No, I'm not, but I'm going to watch Doolittle and then that immediately after. Oh, God. Really grim. <laughs> I'll tell you, talk, we need to talk about Kevin's one of the toughest movies I've ever seen. Okay. It's just so confronting <laughs> and so just upsetting and so just disturbing. I just absolutely Can you get adore. Into it at all? Oh yeah. yeah, like the reason it disturbs you is because you're into it. Yeah. No, no, I mean, like, can you get into the plot at all? Or do you want to sort of go into it blind? I think everybody should go into it blind. I think we need to talk about Kevin is actually quite a good title. Yeah. You know, it's like they have a son that's a bit problematic, and they're unsure of how or what they should do mm-hmm. with said child, and how that puts strain on the relationship, and what the child has done that you don't really find out towards the end. It's very shattering. Um, Terry and Cyrus are two really good indie dramas. He's in The Aviator, The Hours, Chicago, he got nominated for an Oscar for, Gangs of New York, which is fun, and Boogie Nights. So he's had a career. He's had a very good career. (laughs) Um, I was really surprised by how good of a career he's had. Very strong. He's also really good in Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox story. I need to see that. I popped that up on my... um related films yeah i I wouldn't mind watching that that's fun um and then uh talia knights and stepbrothers because i was like really he's only in like three comedies it's like his career's comedy based but i think people think he's a comedy actor yeah but he's not really which is very surprising he's also is he in in one of the marvel films he's in guardians yeah he's in guardians yeah just there yeah it doesn't really do anything no like James Gunn just wanted to work with him. Yeah, it's like, hey, how you doing, man? Let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's do some films. All right, so anything else that you want to say, Oscar? Oh, let's go through it. Um, I mean, like, I've written down the dates, so I'm just going to go through who... If you've the... done the work, do you know? I've notes. done the work. Go on. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, so here's all the people that she's uh, fucking. Uh, Charlie Chaplin, Harry Houdini, Sigmund Freud, Albert Einstein, and Mark Twain. Uh, Mark Twain was dead. <laughs> Charlie Chaplin was 13. <laughs> Harry Houdini was the only person that sort of seemed feasible. He was 38, kind of the prime, but he didn't leave America. Uh, Sigmund Freud was in exile in Vienna. Uh, and was 56. And um, Albert Einstein was 30, so he didn't look that, that age. Just, I just, I don't know. And also Gandhi wasn't, remember how Gandhi says I'd hang that guy too? He wasn't a present figure. Yeah. In the 1912s. <laughs> I was just... I don't know. It just frustrated me that like, I just Google it. Yeah. Just like you've just pick a date. Like, I feel like it's so lazy that they didn't decide like Queen Victoria and the Titanic not being in the same. I think it's very indicative of the type of film it is. Yeah. Really? Like, are you saying that like, they were like, ah, this is a they don't bit. fucking care. They don't care. Like it's a movie where literally you can feel them not giving a shit. Yeah. Consistently. Such a lazy comedy. Which, like, such... So much you just know where the gag is. I'm trying to think. It's like, you know, like, subvert expectations in, like, comedy. Yeah. But this one, like, that gag of, like, the... Hey, Watson, I'm gonna put a disguise on. Where are you, Holmes? Oh, Holmes like, really low... Lo- like, it's... Here's the thing. If you take out your... A handful of the jokes, it's probably a PG film yeah like that's the level of comedy it is it's really kid comedy but it's not a kid because you need to sort of know sherlock holmes you kind of know a bit about history yeah like it feels to me i don't, I don't know like in another one this is probably somebody's cat in a hat <laughs> like <laughs> yeah i guess we can't really judge it do you think i looked it up i think the only positive review i could find was people just like i watched this high yeah it's still shit but yeah i watched this high is that who would watch it then? Just high people? Just high people. I mean, would you do a sequel? Do you see they... Let's have a little, like... Because they did plan... For, not plan for a sequel, but... The end... Did you... You saw the end uh, credits? I didn't know. I turned it off immediately. Oh, you wrote... You you missed out. Not really. Ralph Fiennes in another uh, scene. He's in an American bar. What's before the end credits? Oh, right? is it? All right, yeah. cool. That's okay, it. yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That's the scene no dupes in! Yeah. Oh, God. 
Best actor in the movie, Noah Jew. <laughs> I hate your obsession with this kid. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good kid he's actor. He's a good kid actor. And I was excited. He was, you know what? He, he's an up and coming emerging star. It's a star. paycheck. It's a paycheck. <laughs> good for him. Um, yeah, I guess they were like, let's go to America. I don't really want to talk about a sequel. I don't want to talk about this film, really. I don't know what else they can do. But I want to give a shout out to our Baracula listeners in the Netherlands at 2 p.m. You got a sixty percent chance of rain with your seventeen degree weather. That's just for you. That's just for the fans. It's a bit. I will not stop. I like the idea that we've googled how to like grow a podcast <laughs> and just interact with audience members. Anyway, yeah. you're listening from this specific city. Yeah. Do How's we have a Do we have a list? If you're in Bathurst at the moment, <laughs> enjoy the night. <laughs> if you're listening to this in the morning, wait. <laughs> We start. You should really only listen to this at a certain night, guys. Oh yeah, this is kind of a horror podcast. Yeah, don't be, don't be. No, more of that. You see that um Apple Television series that they're creating that it's like you're only able to watch past midnight. No. Oh, okay. It's like this thing. So it's like the episode will only be out for a short time past midnight. Hilarious. That's like a fun. So it's like a horror thing. But yeah, you can only watch the episodes in between like 12 and 2 a.m. Oh, that seems so... That's a fun pitch, but also it's like logistically such a bitch. Yeah. Like, I'd be so pissed if I was like invested. It's like, I think it's Apple. Somebody's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but should we do that as a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. You have to... But we have to pick each region because the world... It's rare, we're actually a world one. Like, yeah. We have not reached Asia or South or the America. Who haven't we here? We haven't reached South America. Okay. Africa. Yeah. Antarctic and... We can hit Antarctica. (laughs) Hey, Antarctic fans. Penguins. (laughs) Am I right? (laughs) Happy Feet. We'll do Happy Feet 2 if if you want us to. Happy Feet 2 or Happy Feet 2? Happy Feet 2. All right, good. With Bill and Will the Krill. (laughs) The big big thing I remember from that one. So there you go. It's a big tick for... Tick, we got that audience. What was it? Not Alaska. Uh, No, it was... What was it? South Pole and North Pole. (laughs) (laughs) We'll do hoodwinked for the for the Polish. <laughs>example of how not to do a comedy movie i think you need a strong plot so <laughs> i think it's so if you're writing a comedy script sit down this is what you're saying sit down and watch Holmes and watson i think so learn. i think it's a good case study because i think you need one it's a bad spoof movie yeah two it's got a bad mystery and three it's a bad display of jokes i think it's interesting to see that like even with two there's a lot of good comedy actors i think it's interesting to see like what you should and shouldn't do well it's like here's a here's a movie that i don't think is primarily a comedy that i think is far funnier than this Mm. which is knives out which also has a terrific mystery Mm. wrapped around it and then also really good gags like just throughout it genuinely like i think that's it's a very fun. witty, very fun oh, like yeah. murder mystery that is if you're not enjoying like it doesn't rely on the comedy and it doesn't rely on like it gets to work in so many different ways. 100%. Doesn't it? Yeah. Whereas this, I think it, I was just honestly I was a bit like I think the most upset was just the mystery. I'm like this isn't even an attempt. It's so so boring. Like I don't. That's why we've struggled to talk about it. Yeah, there's like, there's so much we could go into, but I don't actually want to go into the film. That's what I thought. Like, I have, like, notes, but it's just me being, like... Bad scene. The conceit of Sherlock learning to approach Watson is an okay idea, I guess. It's a lot of that. Brave did it. (laughs) That's one of my notes. Brave was the killer. Yeah, that felt weird. She was like a. It's like, hey, she's been. She's a slut the whole thing. I thought Watson being the killer is a fun idea. Not that they do anything. No. But, you know. They really don't do anything. They go, it's not him, but let's do five minutes of it pretending to be him. Yeah. Hugh Laurie's fun because he's. Sitting down. His house, which is is. Holmes, you know. Yeah. I thought. And Stephen Fry. Is in the uh, Guy Ritchie one as him. It's a bit yeah, fun. It's a fun. Sure, <laughs> you know they they wanted Stephen Fry though. <laughs> oh yeah, they were like, oh, oh fuck, Hugh we can't get Stephen Fry. Where's Hugh? Get yeah. Hugh on the phone. Who Did you have another? Ah, uh, I thought it's good because the first bit of Sherlock media that doesn't have weird fan art. <laughs> 
no one's drawing these two mm. in in what's it called? What's the what's that fan art called where they're shipped together? What like smut or <laughs> No no no, were you never like on Tumblr? I was around like females in like two thousand and thirteen and like have you heard like Sherlock and Doctor Who and that uh, supernatural show combined together in this disgusting, horny, disgusting incest mess? Guess your this is your first introduction. And there was a lot of weird fan art, like on Tumblr, in, like twenty thirteen, yeah. of Sherlock and uh, Watson making out. Oh, we know why you didn't like this film then. <laughs> yeah, I just I just didn't think there's enough in there's enough. They weren't kissing enough. You were like, I can no to go and jack off to the pictures <laughs> that somebody's drawn after this, and then you were just disappointed. Ah, <laughs> oh, rats! I couldn't <laughs> wank off to Will Ferrell and John C. Riley. <laughs> That's my biggest issue with like, the film. Fine, I'll click on back over to Supernatural then. <laughs> Um, as for me, who would watch this? I thought 10 year olds. I think it's genuinely like, I mean, I loved spoof movies as a kid because mm-hmm. it's such broad comedy. Yeah. Like before you actually find any sort of like, until you realize it's shit. Really. Yeah. Before you get identity. Like, I think it's old enough in terms of like, if you're a 10 year old, you're like, <laughs> I should be hearing some of the things oh, that these whoa, characters are saying. I think huge, huge fans of Will Ferrell might find... I was thinking... I think it's more of an upset. I think it's more... I mean, they watch it, but I don't think they would... They must be... They must be upset with this. And then I thought... And then I thought, if... Look, if you don't like Sherlock, Hmm. Elementary, Mr. Holmes, or the Guy Ritchie Sherlock films... Or Sherlock Gnomes, <laughs> maybe this is, like, for you. This maybe is this entrance. is the untapped one that this is what you've been looking for in terms of, like, Sherlock Holmes content. Have they you read, haven't liked have, any of have the Have they others. read the books? And they've been trying to And they've to read it. the books. Yeah. And they've gone, no, oh, if literally that's so many different, if none of that, if none of that's working for you, then maybe this is this it. This might be it. <laughs> this might be it for you. So that's my <laughs> sitting. I like the idea of sitting down with Sherlock Holmes, going, "No, it's not right. I need something else. Duh, I want them eating an onion for a bit. Can we throw that in? I want him to not know what hat to wear. <laughs> you need to know. I feel like you need to know so much about Sherlock Holmes to enjoy. That's why I'm like, you would have learned <laughs> from all the other iterations and gone. Ah, oh, it's just not clicking with me. Yeah, you're right. This is who would watch. This is someone who's watched every other iteration of Sherlock Holmes going, it's not for me. Surely this would be it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm sorry to tell you, just, you're not a fan of Sherlock Holmes. I like, to, I like to rule it out. You have to watch every, you have to absorb every Sherlock piece of content and go, all right, I'm, I'm not into it. <laughs> I'm not a fan. All right. That's it. <laughs> I guess that, yeah. Uh, all right, Oscar. Shall we talk about our palate cleanser? I think we should. Because yeah. seeing we're Australian and we're yeah. doing all right with we're coronavirus, right. baby, we got treated to tenant this we weekend. We treated tenant. And it's weird that we watched this and then immediately went to the, yeah. the movie theaters. It felt very strange mm. seeing this kind of movie and then tenant. Yeah. It's very jarring. Yeah. So <laughs> you can't really go in. I mean, do you want to go into it? Like, well, I feel like, like when it's mm, we won't do spoilers. Yep. Yeah. Say as a general consensus, okay. I liked it more than you. Yeah. I think. Um, I think it's very much for Nolan fans. Mm-hmm. There was a weird thing the media was trying to do, which was basically be like critics are split on it. Like at the moment, and I suspect it will go down. At the moment, it has like an eighty-one percent on Rotten Tomatoes. And they were like, oh, the critics don't know what to make of the new Nolan film. Some of it say it's his wor- like the worst movie ever. And, and, worst movie ever? Yeah, I and things like that. that. And like a, you know, and like a humorous dud and things like that. And I'm like, what an odd stance for you to like publicize on when... Like, I could understand if the movie... I think the movie will drop. Yeah. Probably to like the 60s or something, because I think, I it's, think over- it's overwhelming. I and I think, think it's so. it asks a lot of its audience... That was my main issue with it. I mean, there's definitely things about it that are fantastic. I think the action, I think the effects they've done are just fantastic. I think some of the choices were a bit wishy-washy for me. You enjoyed a bit more. Well, I was like, I think it's an incredible conception of time travel. Mm. Like, I mean, he's very, pretty good at his world building. Like, Inception is like very well, like a very well, like world built mm. concept. And I do like this idea of time travel, of which you just have to live through. The reversion of time. Yeah. Instead oh, I like of that. I like the reversion. That sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. But like that's what it is though. Yeah. Is you know. 
which I think if you've seen the trailers, you probably know, but it's like everything moves backwards and you just simply have to live back until the point in time that you want to change. Mm. And then you kind of like flip back into going forwards and then you just have to live back through it. I really did enjoy the movie once I really understood that. The first 30 minutes for me were quite overwhelming. Yeah, that's what I messaged to you. I said, I think it's a very overwhelming watch on its first viewing because it's very loud. Mm. It's very like... I, I think the action's quite tense. I think it throws you in the deep end. It does, it, it's and, it, much and like... that's, I think it really does expect a lot from you. And I see a lot of people like it's really, I don't know. Like I think I don't want to spoil stuff with Robert Patterson, but like I find that very tragic. And I think a lot of people overlook that because it's a revelation at the end. I'll be honest. Like I knew what was sort of happening, but I couldn't like tell you for sure that was happening, and that's why I was sort of like. Oh, I think this is like, <laughs> I was like, am I meant to have this emotional payoff or like, sort of sympathy yeah. towards? Well, the it's a good, it's a little I ambiguous think, thing at the end. Yeah. It's because it's cleverly, it's like a, just a lot of things are happening outside yeah. of time, and people are in paradoxes and things like that. Where would you? Because you, I think you're a very big fan of Nolan. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Where would you rank this? Where would you put this as like? At the moment, it's like underneath, like his. Like underneath, like the Dark Knight and the Prestige and Inception and that. It's like all <laughs> like so. Where you, where you, like I think it for me it works better than like Dunkirk. It's kind of like on par at the moment with Interstellar, a movie I didn't love but have kind of mm. come to really like. I think it will probably overcome Interstellar. Interstellar. Yeah. I think it's better than Batman Begins and The Dark Knight Rises. Mm. I probably enjoy it a bit more than like Memento. It feels like Memento is a real mix of this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's really in, in, like, the middle for me. I think it's really hard. People have such high expectations. Like, I a director so. can always churn out his next best film he's made every no. fucking time. I think it's a ridiculous thing to Oh, he's got him. disgusting. It's like, hey, you're going to make a film that's yeah. going to be loved by everyone. And yeah. it's just like, no, I'm not. Like I, I, do, su- yeah. I have to surpass myself surprise. And I think that's why it's so complex. It's yeah. So and I think also a big issue is um, when something's popular, people tend to turn on it. Mm. So I feel like people are really beginning to turn on Nolan. I think so. I think, do you, like, think, it's, do you think it's the I'm, fan base? Do you think that I don't, know, I, don't I don't have really run-ins with the fan no, no, base, but are they not. supposed to be like Rick and Morty-ish? I mean, I think they're quite... I think there's a lot of defense of it, of sort of like you didn't. If you have a critique of it, yeah, like I've seen a lot of people go like the females aren't treated wonderfully. Oh well, he's got he's got any shortcomings that I think a lot of directors yeah. do. Like I mean, in terms of yeah, I don't think he sometimes his female yeah his female characters yeah. are always like underwritten, but also I'm like I don't see an issue with like. Like he's a white straight male director. I thought this. I, I, I thought this one was very inclusive. There was quite. A yeah, there was. Of, I think he was like genuinely trying, but also it's like write what you know. Yeah. Like he's writing these like very British, <laughs> like yeah. suit wearing people. He's pretty much writing him into each script. Yeah. Which is fine. He's writing what he knows. Mm. He's a guy that loves his wife and his family, so it's always family orientated in terms of what the connection is. Yeah. Like I get that. I think Spielberg. Like Spielberg hasn't made a good film in a long time. I don't know. Like a. There's like a few. I think Denis Villeneuve has the same shortcomings at the moment. I adore him. You think? Well, he's done. Uh, he's doing the new Dune, right? Yeah, he's doing Dune. But I mean, like, I think, uh, like, Blade Runner twenty forty nine also has like, not like super well realized female characters. It's also a bit emotionally distant. Is that another point? Do you not think of this sort of world? They ask us to care in some scenes. They do, but I also think the world's quite absorbed. Like, they want it to be sort of like... But, I mean, Tenant, I think, is the same. Yeah, that's but, true. And people are still critiquing that it's not. I think that's the issue. I mean, like, when you put all these, like, le- like sort of, like, wants for this film, yeah. it's not going to tick off all those boxes. Well, I was... Like, if you want a Nolan film... Yeah, yeah. I, a... Like, I think it's the most nolan film he's made. Yeah. And I think if you like that, I think you'll really dig it. Mm. And if you're a casual fan, I think you're going to be 50-50 on it. And then if you're someone that just enjoys going to the movies, you probably won't enjoy it, but you will enjoy the action. Yeah. Like, for me, I think he's very good at creating a movie that kind of works face value. Mm. And you'll go, oh, the effects were fun. The action was really good. And I enjoyed it at face value and I never want to watch it again. Yeah. And then I think if you really want to put more into it and watch it again and give it like what it is. Like, I do like the fact that he does make a movie that rewards multiple viewings. 
Definitely. So many movies just don't. I think, well, I was sort of like on the fence about this because I was sort of thinking, is it, because I thought this film, I was a bit annoyed at the start because I was like, he's expecting me to rewatch it. That's fine, but I do think it's a bit of an ask to ask it to people who like to say, like, I think enjoy? Inception asks you to rewatch it though. I think it does, but I think on a first watch, because I don't think Inception had the meme of like, I don't get it, but like. People do. People I think always people are do. like, well, we don't get the dream thing. I think this is pretty much on par with him. You think? I was more, I was more, maybe I was just thrown into the deep end. Inception, I like, felt like I got first watch quite yeah. young. This one was a bit, maybe it was late. I watched it at nine thirty. <laughs> I do. just watched what's it called? Yeah. This fucking film. Yeah, <laughs> what's it called? Holmes and Watson. Holmes and Watson. Yeah, my brain was broken. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I uh, I really enjoyed it. I'm really keen to watch it again. I think my opinion of it will probably like go up. Like, I mean, the I compare it to Blade Runner twenty forty nine because that's also that is a movie I didn't love the first time I saw it. I really, I really like Blade Runner. Well, I just remember it being like a lot longer and slower than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be more of an updated version of Blade of the original Blade Runner, yeah. but really, it and I think the reason it didn't make any money is because it's so much like the first one, mm. and I don't think it was really marketed like that. No, which is probably why audiences didn't really they groove did. to it. But it's a movie I saw again in cinemas with other people, and I really clicked with it the next time I saw yeah. it, just because I was like a head of it and I knew it was coming and I could enjoy things more. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's always a. I think always once like a you good know, thing. I think when you're not expecting what you're going into, it always just like throws you. But I think once you have an expectation of like, I know what I'm getting into. I know it's gonna be a three hour film. Mm. I know it's gonna look beautiful, but like, so, <laughs> but Blade Runner, it's very long. It's yeah, just, I love it, but it's once you know that going into it, I especially think because it Blade Runner twenty forty nine is like, like I mean, Tenant's an action film. Yeah. Blade Runner 2049 is like a very expensive art house film. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, there's bits of action, but like. I'd say most such, of it so is little... just some gorgeous cinematography. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah. Like, Tenant has like very long set pieces. Mm. The car chase is excellent. <laughs> yeah. And the aeroplane sequence is also terrific. Oh, the um, invasion is. That a spoiler? Inversion. No, the, the invade, like, what's it called? Oh, the invasion at the end. But, yeah. like, the airport sequence is really... Yes, sorry. Because I was, like, we were saying this after the film with the people I watched it with. He really knows how to make something big. Mm. That I feel like some <laughs> some directors are, like, there will be, like, a big set piece, but it doesn't feel big. Like, I never feel like in Transformers, the Transformers feel big. No, and Michael Bay does use some sort of practical... Yeah, sometimes. but yeah. I mean, like, I don't I think this is where he, like, knows where to sit the camera, or his yeah. cinematography, cinematographer does. Because mm. it was, like... That airplane, and I was like, it's fucking huge. It like, it's just crushing those cars. Knows how to make something feel like... And the bungee jumping sequence, like... Really knows how to make kind of like... A city feel like a playground. Or yeah. something like that. He thinks big with his set pieces. He does. That opening, like, the Dark Knight. It's like, we're going to skyscraper here to there. Yeah. Like, why? Because <laughs> we can. <laughs> um, yeah. Same with, like, that... I love the opening of the Dark Knight Rises with, like, the airplane attacking the other oh, airplane. Yeah. Ah, he knows his set pieces. He does. He so, just... you know, I think, honestly, you'll enjoy the set pieces, if if nothing else. That's wh- that's why I have like, gave it such, like, a, a good review. I didn't Do you really... think you'll watch it again and enjoy I it I think more? so. I think I want to watch it again. Yeah. I think it deserves it. Even though I'm a bit angry, I have to. But I'm like, ah, all right, I'll give it a go. But I don't know if I'll watch it and then suddenly go, this is the perfect film. I think there's certain flaws of it that I'm a bit yeah nitpicky on. But I do think it deserves a never watch. Yeah. I'm happy to. Yeah. Then I think that start would be a lot more interesting. Yeah, there's nothing fucking else on the same. No, it's thing. literally this until another film, maybe. Do you think they <laughs> released it to... Why do you think they released it now? Um, I think just because Nolan pushed it. Yeah. The thing is, the you don't have to see it if you don't want to see it. Mm. And it's getting a release in some areas that I get are not safe to go to the cinema. Yeah. And if so, don't watch it. It's released because in some areas of the world where cinemas are reopened, they are bombing and mm. they're going to go out of business. And the mm. only reason he was like, I'm putting it out because I don't want cinemas to die because he loves cinema. Enough. And I feel like sometimes, de- determining on the media, he got kind of like painted as a villain. Mm. Or, or And I'm like, but as somebody who like knows a cinema opener, like a cinema owner, mm. very thankful this movie's coming out because there's just nothing. I'm sure people a lot. I mean, like it's a great one because people have to see it a lot of times. Maybe he knew about the. No, maybe he knew this was going to happen. Yeah, I think from a studio standpoint, I wouldn't have released it. 
Mm. It's an expensive film, and I don't think it's going to make its money back in the current climate. You don't think? I was thinking that because I was thinking they thought that it, when all the films actually can get released, it might get yeah. bogged down. I feel like there's going to be like, whenever this is like cool, whenever they're yeah. like, this is viable for cinemas to release, I think it's going to be like five times the amount of films that normally are on just dumped. Mm. And I'm not sure they're going to make. Maybe a lot of people will go to the cinema because they've missed that, but I don't know. I think it might have got drowned out. So I think it being the only film yeah. out at the moment might be it's one like make quite a bit of money. Well, I mean, I hope so. I hope it does well yeah. because I like to reward, like, I don't know, I don't know when the last that's time the I saw an ri- original film yeah. of that size and caliber. That, that's why it's so, like, I do love it because at the end of the day, like, it's like no one else could do that. Yeah. No one else gets has the. Nobody else has fucking tried. Yeah. So. Go him. Yeah, go for it. What's this one? I didn't get a Dune trailer before it. I want Dune. Give I me Dune. Dune. I'm desperate for Damn Dune. Damn it, Denis, give me <laughs> Dune. <laughs> I was going to bet on the Oscars this year, but yeah. because I don't know which film's going to come out and yeah. be released. <laughs> it's Mank. It's going to be, yeah. It's going to be Mank. You mean for Fincher. Give me Fincher. Does he want an Oscar? He has, hasn't he? No, he hasn't. Oh, fuck it. I'll put 20 bucks on that. I think it's going to be Mank. It's a movie about movies. And it Hollywood come... loves to stroke itself. And they just did Parasite. They're like, we've done one. We yeah, can... we've done a foreign <laughs> film. We can pat ourselves on the back. Yeah, we get this one. Yeah, we can do this all white love letter to Citizen Kane. <laughs> Is it going to be released this year, though? Yeah, it's a Netflix one. So oh, it just fantastic. doesn't matter. Oh, fuck it. 25 bucks. Yeah. yeah. Ah, Easy. Um... <laughs> if you want betting tips, this is <laughs> what this podcast is now. Yeah. Alright guys, thank you for listening. Tell your friends about us. Maybe one day we'll read out your weather. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and YouTube. And if you have a film you'd like us to review, or questions you'd like to ask, email us at askwwwtpodcast at gmail.com. You can leave us five stars on iTunes or any sort of praise anywhere. It helps new listeners find us and our egos grow. Alternatively, don't do anything and see if we care. Yep, ball's in your court. Thanks for listening. See you next week.